For this lesson, we'll be reviewing combinational logic circuits. This will include adders, comparators, encoders, decoders, multiplexers, and demultiplexers. The first device we'll go over are adders. Now adders perform the task as the name implies. They add the input bits to generate a sum as an output bit. Now in your textbooks, you'll see a half adder as well as a full adder with their corresponding truth tables like you see below. And in, with the good news about full adders, you can expand them and connect several of them together to actually increase your bit capacity. This is known as cascading. And we're going to go over our example problem with this later on. The next device are comparators. The really good news is about digital devices, a majority of the names imply what the functions do for that device. Comparators compare two binary values to determine the relationship between them. So in the illustration below, bottom left, we have a comparator with four bit input on A and a four bit input on B and the outputs determine the relationship. For example, is A greater than B? You might get a high output or a low depending on the values. A equal to B or A is less than B. And just like adders, you can cascade them together to increase your bit capacity. Now we can jump into more complex devices. We have encoders and decoders. Encoders accepts an active input pin designation and converts that pin to a binary output. And a decoder would take a binary input and convert it to a single pin output. So if you look in the illustrations in the middle, we have an encoder and a decoder. An encoder has approximately 16 pins. And whichever pin that is, it's going to convert that number to a binary output. So if you have a pin of, which is say one active, it's going to give you a binary output of 0, 0, 0, 1. And a decoder will perform the opposite function. You input a binary input and get a single pin designated output. And of course, we save the best for last, multiplexers and demultiplexers. Multiplexers allow a digital input from several sources to be routed to a single output line. This is known as a data selector. And of course, we have a device that performs the opposite function, demultiplexers. This receives data from a single transmission line and distributes it to the given output. This is known as data distributors. And you'll see this application very common in USB hubs. Now that we get a little bit familiar with these devices, let's see if we can perform some example problems. All right, so let's jump into our first example. We have determine the cascading adders output sum. So right now we have four full adders and they're in a cascading configuration. And we want to determine the sum of an input of A and an input of B. Let's do two things off the start. Let's go ahead and obtain our truth table from our textbook and then Let's go ahead and input our A and B binary numbers. So we have our most significant bit, and then we have our least significant bit. And just right here, same thing. If it's A4, that's our most significant bit, and then B4, most significant bit, and then A1, least significant, and B1, least significant. So we're gonna input our A and B inputs right here, just as if we see it right over here. So it's going to look like this. Let's do A for starters. A is 1, 0, 1, 0. So it's 1, 0, 1, 0. Same thing for B. 0, 0, 1, 1. And we're going to attack this one adder at a time. So looking at the beginning here, we have A is 0, B is 1, and C is 0. Anytime you have a ground, that's considered 0. Well, looking at our truth table, if you have an A, 0, B, 1, and C is 0, it gives us an output of C out equals 0. So right here we have 0, and then a sum of 1. So I'm going to put a 1 right there. And we're going to do the same thing on the next adder. So I have a 0 for our N. So we have 0 for C, N. Okay. Then we have 1, 1. So 1, 1, and then a C of zero. And that's going to say output of C out equals one. So I'm going to put a one right there and then a sum of zero. So that's going to be a zero right there. Same song, different verse. Bring my uh, carry bit right there. Same thing. A is zero. B is zero. C is one. Zero, zero, one. So let's go ahead and take our carry bit to zero. And then our sum is one. All right, last time, I'm going to 
bring my carry bit over here. So I have an input one for A, and then zero for B, and then zero for a carry bit. So it's one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero. So I have a carry bit of zero, and then a sum of one. This will give us a total sum of one, one, zero, one. And this is going to be obviously base two. You can either use your calculator or do it the old fashioned way. So one, one, zero, one equals in decimal format equals 13. And that's a base 10 as well. And there's a very easy way to check that. You can either do this on your calculator or the old fashioned way. So if you added this up, it's going to be one, zero, one, zero, plus, and then zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, one. And again, I'm going to do it both in binary form. So it's base two, and I'll do it in decimal form. So it's also going to be base 10. So 10, 10 is 10 in decimal format, and zero, zero, one, one is three. So right there, that already looks pretty good. Well, just verifying it, 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 0 with a carry. 0 plus 0 plus 1 is 1. And then 1 plus 0 is 1. And of course, if you add decimals together, 10 plus 3 is 13. So this confirms our answer. Okay, that one's pretty easy. Let's go do another one. All right, for our next example, we've got a little curveball here. We have to determine the designated output node based on the input address DC. And DC is in a hexadecimal format. It's a base 16. So right there, that's a little bit of a curveball. And it looks like we have a decoder here that has a bus, an 8-bit bus. And it looks like it's going to be using bits A4, A5, A6, and A7 of that 8-bit bus. So there's a few things we need to find out. First of all, we need to determine the binary format of DC. Well, the good news is about your calculator is you can actually plug and chug DC, which is base 16, to a binary format, which is your base 2. And just using a calculator function will give you 1, 1, 0, 1, and then 1, 1, 0, 0. And that is in that base 2 format. Well, the good news is we can actually break this up and determine which bits would go in this bus. Now, we really didn't go over buses this much, but it's very simple. We went over a little bit in the memory devices, and we'll go over it again in microcontrollers. However, it's very simple. If you have a slash 8, and it's a bold line, that's a bus, and it has 8 parallel lines, or 8 bits, in that bus. And it looks like you have an address of A7, to A0, which means your most significant bit is A7, and your least significant bit is A0, so which means this is A7, and this is A0. But we're only going to use four lines or four bits out of that bus, and we're going to use location A4, A5, A6, and A7. Well, looking at this, we have A1, A2, A3, a4, A5, and then it looks like if I could fit A6 right there. So it looks like it's only using this last half right here for our address, which means it's going to be using 1, 1, 0, 1, and that's A7 through A4. So if you're going to actually put this in your decoder over here, it's going to be least significant bit first, which is 1, then 5 is 0. A6 is 1, and A7 is 1. And that's pretty simple, because all they're going to do is use that decoder, so we're going to need that binary number, and then find out what the designated node is in decimal form. So what you have to do is take this base 2 number and convert it to a base 10. And again, you can use your calculator for that one as well. 1101, it's kind of funny, because it used the same binary number in our last example, is going to be a base 10 number of 13. And I'll say that's base 10, that way you know what format it's in. So which means the node it's going to correspond to is this guy right here. So that's going to be your active node. So I was getting your feet wet as far as understanding a little bit of buses. 
the format's going to be in, which is going to be hexadecimal, as well as get a little understanding of decoders. All right, let's do another example. All right, for our last one, we have a nice little multiplexer right here. And we want to determine the output expression based on the data select inputs. So what does that mean? We want to know Y, which is your output, based on these data select inputs. So these right here is what we're going to determine based on your data select inputs. So how we're going to get a high output based on these guys right here. Well, looking at this, anytime I see S of 0, that's your least significant bit. And then S of 2 is your most significant bit. So we're going to log that. That's just the way it makes it easy on us. Now you're probably thinking, well, what do you mean by making the expression based on these inputs? Well, let's look at this first. Right now we have data inputs, which is D of 0, D of 1, D of 4, and D of 7. that are going to give us a high output because it has 5 volts. D2, D3, D5, D6 is grounded, which is going to give us a 0 input. And I'll tell you what, I'll make it easy. Also, let me change colors for the other ones. So that's going to give us a 1 input, 1 input, a 1, and a 1. And we want to find out what our expression is going to be for a high output based on these data inputs. Well, let's jump into it. So we have this guy right here. To select this data point right here, it would give you a high output. So if you're able to select D of 0, it would give you a 1. The way to do that is choose your data select inputs accordingly. For example, we want a binary input of 0, 0, 0 to obtain this data bit location. So in this case, it's going to be S of 2, S of 1, S of 0, off. These are all going to be nots to give us this particular location. All right, let's do the next one. So this is going to be OR, and I'll erase the arrow in the middle. Same thing. We want to find the data select binary input for 1. So we're looking at S of 2, S of 1, S of 0. And again, this is 0. And when we want to find a 1, well, the binary input for 1 is going to be not, not, and then 1. So 0, 0, 1. And I'll tell you what, that way we can just follow along easier. Okay? Same song to inverse for the next one. I'm going to erase this arrow. So we're going to do the next one for 4. So 4 is going to be S of 2, S of 1, S of 0. And the binary number for 4 is 1, 0, 0, which is going to be 1, 0, 0. And then it looks like we have one more. So OR. And then we want to do 7. So 7 is going to be S of 2, S of 1, S of 0. See, I had to make a fit. And for 7, it's a binary number of 1, 1, 1, which means data select S2, S1, and S0 all need to be on to have a 7 as an output. So this right here will be your expression to obtain a high output based on your data selects. This one's actually a fairly easy way of doing it, but the only reason I did highs right here, that way you can understand how multiplexers work based on your data selects. So hopefully this is enough information to get your feet wet with some of these components. You might be able to pull out some of your PE reference books to get a little more practice. But if you have any questions, feel free to let me know, and I hope you all have a good day.